I want to donate my body to science. So do I. Just in general? No, yours. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardiai. I forgot to pick a name. Okay, how about you be um, cool, Stephen King. Okay, I like that. Because you know why? Because I write scary books. Yeah, we're heading into spooky season. Okay. Yeah, this here is Frank wearing a Corona hoodie, which is scary in itself. It became scary. No, but they had to alcohol. Keep, they had to keep the name. Oh, scary. alcohol is scary. Um, Corona. Some 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 people. We used to call it Corona. No yeah. one calls it Corona. I know. You used to call it Corona. Oh, uh, you got a bad case of the Rona. Yeah. But now it is COVID. COVID. The reason he's wearing this hoodie today is saying it ain't over. I I thought it was over. He thought it was over. But apparently, you just got a boot booster. I got a booster. How I, was that? I feel fine, but this is the thing. I don't know if I needed the booster. I believe this booster was based on the Omicron variant, variant that you got that I had in January. Oh man! So, because because I, I I sailed right through this booster. The booster I got last September. So it's like getting affected the, me. So like the flu, the flu variant changes every year. That's why we yes. have to get a shot every year. Right. You essentially got 2022's flu. And then got the shot for yes, or I you think, got twenty twenty one's flu and then got the I shot. I think because last September after. I got um, a COVID a uh, booster. Yeah, and then I didn't get the COVID that everyone had been getting in the year twenty twenty one, and I was good all the way till December. December comes um, uh, January first. I got Omicron. I think there's no way to prove it, right? I didn't go to a science lab. You didn't go to a science man, but or a woman. everyone was getting Omicron ev- in our area at that time. Yeah. So this booster is the Omicron booster. So yes, I'm sure it like also just helps though. I think it does. Like it's it's not a completely separate virus. No. it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah. yeah yeah. I got it and um. Are and you happier? Yes. Maybe I should. I've never had COVID, guys. I'm one of the few people alive on this earth. Never had COVID. I've never had it. You were vaccinated. I was and boosted and boosted. But so was I, and I got it. Yeah. And, and you sat across from me. If you look at the um, there I have on on our playlist when you watch old videos. I literally on the one I wrote. She has COVID in this, and she doesn't know it. Yeah, wasn't there like something about like us saying something about the masks? Like you were wearing a mask or something? It's like I don't know. Why are you still doing that? And yeah. I'm like, oh, take it off. Yeah. Turned out you had COVID. I had COVID. So I we did a show <clears throat> across from each other. I had COVID. Then the next week I was doing it from the car. I want to donate my body to science. So do I. Just in general? No, yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know why I don't want to do that? I'll, I'll say it in a second. But I, w- I really think I can't get it. I mean, knock on wood. Um, I don't think this is wood. I think this is one of those, you know, like Salisbury steak. Well, it's not. Of wood. It's, it, it's, yeah, this is um, like it's processed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Salisbury, it's Salisbury steak wood. Um, I would like... For science and without the risk of being wrong, like someone with COVID to sneeze on me directly because I don't think I'd get it. No, I know. And and another reason you might not be able to get it is because your father didn't get it. Yeah. And he's super compromised. <laughs> he's as compromised as he gets. <laughs> but we have those, those genetics, that cockroach genetic. Well, your siblings got it. So I don't know how. Well, I, I don't you, know how it you works. passed on those genes. I don't know how it works. Um, I don't know how genetics works. You know why I don't want to do it by body science? One, just in case, like, the Egyptians were right. You know what I mean? Um, and two... <laughs> yeah, like, you have to be... You have to be with intact. all your pieces. Yeah. Otherwise, those pieces aren't going to be with you. I think King Tut was even buried with his with his donkey. Yeah, well, that was normal. You'd be buried with the chariot. Okay. So that you'd have a little little. Yeah, didn't whip. they sometimes kill your servants as well? Yeah, so I think so. Or and they, they definitely made... Like, your wife? I don't know. I think they definitely did things like... They'd make little people and like that would be your, oh, okay. like little like figurines. They give you money and they would get things that were hopefully would help you. And oh, yeah. Money for the, the fairy crosserman. Yeah. Um, no, that's not the reason I don't want to donate. Because when you think you're going to donate your body to science, you think it's going to be for something grandiose. Right. And Sometimes. I guess what I'm going to say, I can already argue with it by saying, but that does help. 
Yeah. And you don't know, like, you could be one small thing in a breakthrough. But I was, like, looking at this this uh, video of, and it was, like, 50 suitcases just in this backyard. And they're, like, um, each one of these suitcases have dead bodies in them. But that is very helpful for crime, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's to see, like, to understand the decom- decomposition points right. and stuff. That's very helpful. You have to also understand the difference between organ donation and donating your body yes. to science. Organ donation is hopefully if your organs are still good, intact, on time, they're close, a lot of things need to line up, then you will be going from person to person. Right. Door to door. Hospital to hospital. Um, body to science can be from anything. Organ donation, your family gets your body back. Yeah. You bury it. You your keep body it. Your body of science is... Is you are the, the, you, you never see you again? <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, there's there was like a Franklin Franklin Institute about just like the magic oh, of yeah. the body, and they were that just traveled like, across the yeah. the country, and maybe the world. Bo- get, I think it was called body. Get a person just like stretch out all of their ligaments and stuff, right. and that person had donated all all the bodies in there were donated, right? Which a lot of people love. Like a lot of people love the idea that their body, their teaching just, tool, yeah, yeah or, or, or it is just getting use. Yes, it, it is getting use for others. Right. Even after they go. It's pretty altruistic. Right. Um, not me, though. Well, um, there. yeah, I don't know. Like, your teeth, they use cadaver bone for when you need implants. Yeah. And where are these cadavers coming from? Is that part of, like, so if you donate your body to science, do they divvy you up and, like, some dentist will get you? Yeah. Or, like, is it like... Do uh, they practice Botox on you? I mean... Yeah. Is it like, um, you know, how governments will have funding? And like the parks and rec department, well, uh, we don't get enough funding. Is like, is the old cadaver department like, why is all of our bodies going in suitcases? Yeah, I don't know. And I think if you donate your body to science, I mean, I think you can be rejected. <laughs> no, I'm serious because sometimes. What an insult. But also not. I mean. Right. It's not as clear cut as you don't make it. Because right. someone who smoked cigarettes for 75 years, body science will want that for, like, for exactly. that. Exactly. So it's not as like. Uh, I lived, my life lived right. too awful to donate my body. It's right. like, well, they might want yours more than we've had a million healthy person people this week. No, I, I, it's funny you should bring this up because I literally was recently thinking about investigating donating my body to science because, um, yo, not don't <laughs> donate your brain. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's just cut that out. Um, I just talked about if maybe they'd practice with Botox or whatever. Um, <laughs> It looked like you had, not Botox, but it looks like you had uh, some plastic surgery done yesterday. I thought we weren't talking about me being sick. Are we not? No, I we just can. thought it'd be fun to put the picture up. Yeah, okay, we can. Um, I got a little I got a little sick uh, yesterday. Um, you know what? Unpop- I, I shouldn't be sitting across from you. Unpopular opinion. I love getting chills. Not like chills, like, ooh, give me chills. Okay. Like having like severe chills. Right. Well, I, only when I can be heated up, but... Why? I You know like when you're in a bed and it's too hot and mm-hmm. like you're sweaty and you don't like it. Right. And maybe you'll open the window and get a cool breeze of air. Like it's nice to warm up when you're cold. And chills is the most extreme version of that. So I was driving around full heat on blast. And like I can know, I know if anyone else would get in the car and be like, well, you're very sick. Like, right. This should not feel good to you. But there's just something, something warm about like being cold and then just blasting heat on you. You know? No. No, so um, that I, is unpopular opinion. So I work at a school, and um, I haven't for long, and so my body, everyone, who, every person who works with kids' body, but mine especially, it's, right. you get everything. Yeah, even other little kids. I mean, um, when when di- when the the smallest kids started going to school, yeah, because they used to go older, you know, five and up, and then they started sending the little littler ones more frequently, like. Now it's completely widespread. Yeah. Like a Gen Z person wouldn't understand that that was unusual. Yeah. That didn't... I, I, I was surprised to see how young, because I, I, like, I'm at a young school, so like the oldest is kindergarten. Right. But the youngest are, I think, six months? Yeah. So they're super, super Three young. Three months? When that started to get popular, like 30 years ago, um, the big phenomenon was your kid was always sick. Yeah. Because the kid and the, the kids themselves, you think, oh, like maybe your immune system. No. Just having that amount of, of yeah. they're not sick. Like, they're healthy kids, but but they just get everything. Yeah, they, they their bodies are, are new. They don't really have any antibodies yet, and on top of that, they do like to put their hands in their <laughs> mouth and stuff. 
Right. Um, so yeah, so this one month, second time I was sick. Um, this time it was it was bad. Fever, chills, all that. And then I'm laying headache. down. Headache. I'm laying down. So I thought we were at the worst of it. And I'm like, oh no. On top of it all, I'm getting chapped lips. I started feeling the sensation of chapped lips. No, it wasn't chapped lips. My my lips swelled um, like twice the normal size. Right. And um, as you can see by my beautiful, you know, plastic surgery, <laughs> it looked like I had already donated my body science and they started running some experiments. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I still don't know what it was. I know I get hives like rarely. You used to get random. And this was, that was the other thing. I went to the doctor today. They said, it's probably strep. Came up negative. Who knows? Hand, foot, and mouth. Whatever. It's a viral thing. Viral, yeah. It'll, it'll pass. This too shall pass. Right. She gave you steroids. Did you take it for the yes. swelling? And so then I took down my mask and said, oh, yeah, one more symptom. And she's like, okay. um, Yeah, don't don't know what this is. She's And then she wanted me to give her an out. She was like, have you used any like, chapstick? Right. No. Have you eaten anything abnormal? No. No no chapstick? No. No anything? It's like, no, ma'am. And um, she's like, I'm going to go do some research. And so she came back and they said it is possible, um, you know, not like a direct correlation, but right. a cause- causation. Right, how, you, how your well, body... No, not a causation, but a correlation. Yeah, everyone's body's different. Yeah, no. Correlation, not causation. Like the strep throat didn't cause your lips as well, but there's a correlation between... It's not completely unrelated. ...someone getting hives and someone having right. a viral infection. So yeah, that was my fun. That was my fun little... But yeah, so you want to donate your body because all your life you've had anomalies right and even if you will never be able to find it out on this earth right you would like please can someone post-mortemly explain what well, was because going I've, on. i care about the future people <laughs> yeah it, you know so I if someone had given their body up with swollen lips right they would have been like well we do know what right. that is i've had unusual um inflammations um my whole life and literally doctors have taken me on interested and then they have said you can go because they couldn't figure it out and you can only figure out so much when you're living yeah. and you're coming in and and um how this doctor just asked you about environment did you eat something did you wear something only a dead body is uh you know something that's not being affected you yeah. know by um yeah, I would they like could cut my lips off and you know run some tests on them without. Oh, well, it wasn't about the lips, but yeah, I'm I'm sorry that you didn't feel well. So okay. Now you're on antibiotic, steroid, and um, magic mouthwash. <laughs> magic mouthwash. Oh yeah. I couldn't it, I couldn't believe that. It's a real one. thing. Yeah. Magic mouthwash. It's a Harry Potter. Um, yeah. But situation. Anyway, guys, that's enough about us catching you up on what's what's to date. Uh, it is Thursday, beautiful Thursday, um, and let's just get into it. It is right. walk through, through Thursday. Thursday. Roll, Roll the, the intro, intro. please. <laughs> I forgot the please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun, cause walk through Wednesday just begun. What's going on, guys? It is walk through Thursday, the best time of the week. What are we doing? Walk through Thursday. We open up the Bible. Bible's open. Once the Bible's open, we pick a Bible verse. It's fun. It's cool. Um, Instead of going over overarching themes, we're talking about what it means to be Christian or what's the overall point of the Bible. We talk about one singular verse, and it's nice. It's both nice for practice to read the rest of the Bible in a way of being open-minded and deeper divering, and also to just get the power. You know, you can't read the entire Bible every time you want to read the Bible, but you can read one verse, and if you start to practice getting that value out of each and every verse then it makes it it makes it so much better yeah <clears throat> we have a playlist for our walk through thursdays we do which we've done for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and years. um and years and weeks and months and years <laughs> and um <coughs> and so the other day i went through the list to be like what are we missing and we were missing we are missing a lot of books that we haven't whole books whole yeah like we've never oh. pulled a walk through thursday out of that book okay so i was going to go through it and pick which i have been doing that's why we did ruth that's why we did esther but you requested this one i did we have done luke more than once but that's fine we never did this one but um yeah so there are other lukes on our walk through thursday but not this one and it's fine it's, it's fine and we try to explain that the bible is all great mm-hmm. and all 
special and all divinely inspired by God. But the nice thing, or the thing I guess that is so reoccurring about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is there's no two ways to spin it when Jesus is saying it, right? Like right. that's that's the most like purest yeah. form of well, the rest of the Bible. Sometimes it takes us a little bit longer in Walk Through Thursday to explain these stories and parables, right? Um, because we need to use the historical context, but also like, but what does it mean, and and how can we find God in a verse that maybe seems violent in the Old right, Testament? Right, right. With Jesus, it's a lot of it was just. I'm going to make it plain and simple to you. Right. And so you can sort of say that one easily. But I did request this one. So we're reading out of Luke. Luke 23, 34 to be exact. 23 is my favorite number. <coughs> 34 is 23 plus 11, which is 11 is also is my favorite number. Yeah. Look at that. You're good <laughs> you, made that. Me, you, made me, you stressed me out there. No, I, I was just impressed that someone could do that. <laughs> Quick maths. Um. So, yeah, let's just read it. Okay. You probably have all heard this before. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Um, you know, so that's a new international version. Obviously, a lot of us know, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Written a little differently, um, yeah. But for they do not know what they are doing. And okay, you request it. <coughs> you request it. With it. You didn't say, hey, I request Luke 23. You said, I request... <clears throat> Father, forgive them for they know not what they yes. do. Just when I looked it up, um, that sentence doesn't stand alone. It, it it includes, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots, but you were more focused on the first part. I was more focused on the first part. That is correct. Um, now you are using other, we'll get back to these, these other yeah, verses? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, why do I want to talk about this? Because yeah. from, from a biblical standpoint, it is why he's saying it. Who knows? Uh, we'll get into that, but it's pretty uh, like cut and dry. Yeah. Um, they were crucifying him. He was on the cross, right? And um, he's at this time he's like speaking to God. Um, even though he is God, it's a sort of like he's looking up. Yeah. Uh, it's a why have you forsaken me? It's a, and it's like there. So he's, he's over these people who are condemned. Who, they've condemned him. They are putting him to death. Right. And he says. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. They don't know what they're doing. Right. And I think it's twofold. And I w- want to talk more about the second fold, but I'll talk about the first fold. Okay. Um, the first fold is they don't know that they're killing God. Right. They don't know that I am the Messiah. Right. And they are they are simple. And, and right. if they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't be doing it. And the second of the two, which I think is just as useful, um, is forgive them for they know not what they do, as just in across the board, like forgive them for for everything they do as, as humans, right? Because they are they are simple human, like they 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 don't understand everything, and they don't mean things with as much malice as as even we put on it. That might seem a little confusing, but this is what the parallel I'm bringing it back to. I've been working with children. I've been teaching. And it has, every time I'm at work, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a new explanation of, of some of these things. Because, yeah. uh, you know, God always compares us as children. Jesus, you, see, you see the imagery of Jesus with the children. And it, he you know, had such a high regard for them. It's, it's why. And I think on earth, we can use children as so much of an explanation for god's love for god's right teaching it's just like right in front of us it's right in front yeah. of us and i think i really do i really like i'm not one who i, I don't want kids yeah i but i do understand i think why kids have such a purpose in life and people say it's the greatest thing and like the, if it is part of your life plan to have right. kids and the one thing is um, the the, the um, fully selfless love. Right. I think that's like the biggest compare. Like for a lot of people, it's hard to, for them to do that to anyone who there's an equal partnership. Right. Kids might be the fir- for the first time for a 30-year-old per- person to have ever loved someone fully outside themselves. Right. 
But then the other thing... And be willing which, to sacrifice. The other thing I think is important for everyone is just the learning lessons. So I'm at school. I'm, I'm teaching. Uh, these are young kids. They are in stages where they're old enough to cause trouble. Not really old enough to understand right. so much so that you can like really discipline them or something. Right. Reason with them or... And so there was this one girl and um, she was biting. A, a, a biting problem. And you can't bite other kids. It's not no. good and stuff. But there was like two different approaches of there's someone came down and they were like, mm, my kid would never do that. I would, you know, I would, like, there would be no, but that would be last thing. Cause the, me and the person I work with are very much gentle parenting, g- gentle parenting. And you know, like se- separation of what's it called yeah. uh, avoidance and, and all right. that. But, um, and this verse just came out to like, it, it just was like, forgive them for they know not what they do. And, that is so much of these kids. These kids have zero malice in their heart. Like, right. They, they, they have, have zero pre-prejudice. They have, they have zero um, bigotry or anger or uh, greed or envy. Maybe <laughs> like on, any one of these things you could say on a small scale, no. like they want toys. And it wasn't premeditated. It's not. It wasn't a plot. No, exactly. You know. It's forgotten about after. It's, it's like just an impulse. They're, they're and... the back to being friends. At, at, yeah. And so... In the time, it can be like, stop. Like, like you're being bad. Right. You're yelling. You're not listening. And I think it really does take a forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. Like, they know you can guide them. The whole point of Jesus is guiding people. Right. But they don't know what they're doing. Like, they right. forgive them. And just like the children, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. And I think it's such an important. Yeah. You can teach them. Yes. Which you did. But you don't. I don't know if the other person you were talking about, you know, they take it kind of personally or yes. like they take it like, how dare you or, yeah. or, you know, not on my watch. And that's not having a forgiving heart. That's not understanding where the child is coming from. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, definitely. And yeah. And a couple, uh, a couple more. How could things. you not forgive somebody who didn't know what they were doing? Exactly. And a couple more things. The other, the other reason there is always this thing with, um, with, G- people talk about Jesus talking to God on the cross. Okay. And um there is that confusion. Well, God is uh, this trinity is not making sense to me. God's on earth. And I do think there is a parallel in this because if you think of God and I'm not going to get into the I'm going to compare the trinity to earthly terms. Okay. But I do think there is times where we talk to ourselves and almost our higher selves, right. like our our because our earthly selves can get mad. Like right. there are things with these kids that are that will just get under my skin. Irritating. The, the, it, it, yeah. my, my 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 teeth will clench, and I'll be like, and it almost is me saying to my looking up and saying, "Forgive them for they know not what they do." Right. And it's like, am I talking to someone else? Right. No, I'm, I'm like, so I'm going up there and channeling back. Right. And then I, okay, I'm not mad at you. You, like you you don't know what you're doing right guide the right way but i i do sort of like that comparison of yeah it's absolutely. not hey you guys don't know what you do it's he's yeah. he's saying it out loud he's saying forgive them for they know not what they do yeah I, I i it's not the first time i compared the dogs to children and like some people will like that and some people won't but i was walking <clears throat> one of those little white dogs today and um and the dog's never been trained on how to walk on a leash yeah. And he just pulls and pulls and pulls and he um crosses he keeps crossing in front of me like to trip me. Yeah. And I was getting very mad. And like yeah. if you've ever seen somebody that that's happening to, you might see them like yank the leash yeah. or be like, you know, stop it. And it's like I didn't think of this at the time, but I'm thinking of it now that you're speaking, you know, to be like the dog was never trained. It doesn't know that it's not supposed to be yanking like that. It doesn't know that I'm getting mad because it, it might trip me. Um, and so, of course, I have to forgive the dog. It doesn't, because it's a nice dog, too. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't know what it's doing. So. Yeah. No, it, it, definitely. Um, and I think it it, it it is, it does take an active effort. And I, that's why, I, like I said, the, the earthly Jesus and, and the in heaven God. Right. Same, same God, but it's that, it is very quick to, uh, like you are frustrated and you forget about that the fact that like who you're frustrated at is not doing it on, right. on purpose they're right. just they're they're doing what what they what they think like oh okay and then 
once you start attacking them. And that was that was like the other thing. It, it's it's it doesn't help Mm-mm. if you yank that dog. Right. The dog doesn't know why it's being yanked. Yeah. And if it do- oh well, it doesn't yank anymore. It's fear based. We right. talked yesterday about the problem with with fear based leadership. Right. It's I don't even know why I'm not doing this, but you know you you'll you'll turn a kid quiet. Right. Why? Because he's respectable or because he's afraid to talk. Right. Um, and it affects other parts of their life. Yeah. Beyond the biting or the pulling. Yeah. So <clears throat> this idea of of understanding that they know not what to do and um and so to for, forgive them for it and to right. to you yourself rise above that earthly anger. Right. Because they're a simple earthly person or person and you need to go above it and say because of that because right. they are. They are bound by what right. they know. It. I must forgive them. Now, coming to the end of the podcast, everything we said so far has been great. If you're working with kids, forgive kids for you know right. what we do. But the whole purpose of bringing this around is right in this home that that is what we are. Right. We like to God, to Jesus, we are kids, and and He was saying to forgive us for we know not what we do. The same way I'm saying it to the children. Right. And. It's important to know that. It's like you, you always wonder like, oh, he's all forgiven and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's it's an easy concept when you switch it like that. And it's like, well, are you all forgiving to, to little two-year-olds right. in your midst? Right. Well, you are. Do they, one to others as you would have and, others. And do imagine how bad a, a two-year-old can be. Yeah. Terrible twos. It's right. How bad can they really be? Right. That's the same way God sees us. Right. And to know that we're forgiven because if um if we said, I can't believe, I mean, if a child would say to you, uh, if if the little if the little two year old could talk to you in it, it would say, "You shouldn't forgive me because that was really bad. Yeah. Like I bit and I, I, you know, you would be like, of course I forgive you.' You know, what you you're know? Doing. and so when we we can't believe that God would forgive us for things, it was like, no, I knew I was stealing from the store, or I knew that I shouldn't nail you to a cross. That's not the kind of they know not what they do. Yeah. Jesus was talking about. He was talking about. They know that they're nailing someone to a cross or they know that they're hurting somebody, but they don't understand the huge implication of that or like the bigger picture. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And just two more things that I want to add before I finish up. And that is sort of dealing with other people Mm -hmm. or other people looking in on this. You'll have people now, you know, be like, oh, you know, anti forgiveness for certain things. Maybe even looking back at why would, why would Jesus forgive the Romans? Like they did this and right. Anytime you put yourself in that situation, you're just another child pointing out. Imagine if, if I'm a kid bit someone and it's like, you shouldn't forgive them. Right. Uh, oh, they, sh- they should be in more trouble for that. Right. And it's like, you're both children and, and you're going to act up right. another time too. And then from person to person, when it comes to forgiveness, and we always talk about um, judging and people condemning other people in the name yeah. of God. I, uh, we can talk more about this later, but I do see this with the children in sort of when one of them um does like if if they handle on their own yeah. or or they jump on to my disciplining mm-hmm. and it's like yeah you, you, it makes them cry it pushes them and says no they're wrong they're bad like all that and i'm like don't get involved like, you're a child too like right it's this idea that it's not for us to any any person on earth to de- condemn them in the name of god because that's another child. That's another child in the classroom, and right. it didn't matter if they just bit someone. Now, you have still have no right to judge them, right. or to say they shouldn't be forgiven, because you're just another two year old, and and the teacher is is understands that just like you don't know anything, they don't know anything, right? And he's there to guide you all the entire class. It's right. not the best kids in the class, right? It's, it's the biters and the non biters alike. How about that? Um, that's good. We'll, we'll, you know what I said we did Luke a few times but we'll do we'll do this one again because then we could um, talk about the second part which was and they divided up his clothes by casting lots yeah. it's a pretty important um, part of the Bible because it's written about in all four oh, yeah. Matthew Mark Luke and John all four wrote about that so we'll talk about that another time and just one call back a lot of the New Testament calls back to the Old Testament um, in Jeremiah 4.22, which is Old Testament, so this is before Jesus was even born, Okay. Um, there's a part where um, Jeremiah is a prophet, so he was getting messages from God, Yeah. and God said, they are senseless children, they have no understanding. 
Um, so he was mad in the, in that story. If you want to go read Jeremiah four, he's unhappy with the way things were going, mm. but but still said they are senseless children. Um, they have no understanding. Yeah. So it it is oh, yeah, it no, is a mercy, I, I, a merciful I, God. Yeah. No. So so we God, this was God saying this. Yes. So quick read over it um because it is pretty negative it's my people are fools they do not know me they're sons of children they don't understand it. they're skilled in doing evil and they know not how to do good um yeah i like it seems once again like this this anger and stuff but i made this correlation to children of you know for, for the know not what they do right but this is their sense of children that have no understanding that is saying children have no understanding which is they don't know what they're doing right and also in this yeah, it's funny. It's, it's two ways, right? Because you're saying they're fools, they're skilled in doing evil, right? And right. they know not how to do good. But then in the same sense, they, it's their senseless children. They have no understanding. So there's a the merciful you, part to it. Yeah, it's like how yeah. can you be skilled in evil um, and but not have any understanding? And what parent hasn't... I mean, you're not a parent. And, but what parent hasn't no, felt this way of Jeremiah 422? No, about, and, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, I, I've only been teaching in so long. And I don't, I don't want it to sound like... I'm anger less. Part of the first thing is me reminding myself because right. how angry you get. Right. And that like goes to just show the parent child relationship. Right. And it's like how they can rev you up. But does it ever stop you from love? Like how many parents right. have felt that? Right. I felt it with, with, with these kids. I'm like, th- they never going to learn yada, yada. And right. then it's like, it doesn't take away any care. It's not if some one of them was in danger at that point wouldn't jump in front of you know, in front of any danger to help them right to make them succeed to do all that none of it's gone but there, there's all it, it, it almost shows a pure relationship right between the two it's it's that one it's that total and full parent child relationship yeah of an a ch- a understand a, a child with no understanding right and a a father figure or a parent figure who is trying to guide them to grow in the right way right that's our podcast See ya. You know, like the last three times I've been kissing the mic. Don't do that. Well, now we have to throw it away. That's what I'm saying. It was like the last podcast I kissed the mic and then I got strapped throat. Would you believe? Peace. <laughs>